Uh, we are now joined at the desk by Mashale Pumapi, who's the MD of Shumba Co, to take us uh, through the company's plans and uh, their vision to tap into the regional energy market. Uh, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Now, I was on your website and a lot of things caught my attention. Uh, one of the things that came out was, you know, mining uh, beneficiation and you're also looking at export coal projects. Now, would you say that you as a company are trying to position yourself to become a key player when it comes to the export market or energy? Well, uh, thank you, Tumisha. I would say both. Um, what people don't realize is that Botswana has got the largest undeveloped coal resources uh, on the African continent. So um, we uh, look work on the first mover basis and um, understanding that the market of coal is going to be large. So in the first instance, we want to address uh, the regional uh, and domestic energy deficit. Uh, we both know that um, we have gone through uh, periods of load shedding. Uh, we've seen um, significant increases in uh, electricity tariffs in the recent years. Mm. Um, so I think in the first instance, we would like to produce coal to address that energy shortage. Mm. And then in the medium to long term, uh, look at exporting coal, both for usage in the region. Um, uh, last year, you would have heard of the coal cliff uh, that's coming in South Africa, whereby um, a lot of the, the aging mines uh, will be cutting down on production. So ESCOM's power supply um, needs a, a, a renewed uh, um, source of coal. Mm. Um, but also for export as well. We understand that China and India continue to be huge uh, consumers of coal. So the, the short answer is, uh, we're looking at both power and export, and uh, I think um, Botswana Coal going forward is going to start filling in that gap. Hmm. Mm. So you're obviously wanting to get involved in the southern African power pool, so to speak. Uh, you know, how much power are you hoping to be able to contribute into these companies, your Zimbabwe, Namibia, South Africa, or are you merely just going to be, you know, just drops in the ocean in terms of, you know, how 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 energy hungry uh, Southern Africa is? I, I think um, it, it's a phased approach. Now, if you look at the size of the market and the, the deficit we're talking about, it's thousands of megawatts. Um, however, uh, producing power projects that side is, a, is quite complicated. You look at uh, Mudupi, you look at Kusile, which um, are huge projects, three to 4,000 megawatts. Um, however, there are significant challenges in building power stations that size. What we're saying is that we will start with a modular approach, uh, 300 megawatts, and then increase slowly um, as the years go by. And, and that way, what you are doing is you are working with more of a tried and tested technology, and you, you are more certain of your market because you're actually feeding into a, a, a market where the deficit is in the thousand of megawatts, and you're producing a, a few hundred at a time. Mm. So you have to get to these markets and you're looking at railway as, as one of the ways of getting there. But would you say that you have the infrastructure in place that allows you to get your coal to where it needs to be? The, the beautiful thing about what you call the Southern African Power Pool is that it, it's a re regional power grid or network where that has nine member countries connected and three that uh, are non-connected. But what that means is that an IPP, an independent power producer in Botswana, can be located in Botswana and sell power to anyone in those nine countries. So you do not have to move the coal, which turns out to be more expensive. It's actually a lot cheaper to do what they say, coal by wire, uh, burn the coal where it is and transmit the energy. So I think for the regional power market, that is the preferred strategy. Obviously, if you're looking at uh, exports abroad or exports to power stations elsewhere, then you'd look at using the existing railway lines mm. or the, the new railway lines that uh, are, um, are planned. Let's look at the, the current regulation that's in place at the moment. You are in the extractive industry. Um, I know that you're looking to get more licenses. If I do stand correct, I'm not sure if you're looking at an additional four in Botswana currently. What's the licensing process like or, and the regulatory environment in general when it comes to getting through some of the red tapes and regulations that you need to you know, abide by? 
Um, Dumishu, I think uh, out of my personal experience, I've done uh, work in a number of African countries and elsewhere. And I think the pleasure of doing business in Botswana is that the, the regulation and the procedures are very clear cut and straightforward. So everything is done by the book. Um, in most cases, uh, things occur on time. Uh, there may be some delays, but uh, normally things occur in a manner and procedurally in such a way that um, you know, as an end user or as a, a, a member of the private sector, you, you are quite comfortable and secure in, in the licensing regime. Would you say this is the situation where you're saying it's, it's easier for you when you're seeing uh, right processes in place? Is this unique to Botswana or is this something that we are seeing more prevalent on the African continent? I, I think the, the predictability of uh, licensing regimes is, uh, varies uh, from country to country. And uh, as an investor, um, as a member of the private sector, what you want to do is see a, a consistency, stability. Um, you want things to be security of tenure and uh, security of procedures and protocol is very important. Um, I would say Botswana is one of the top. In fact, in terms of corporate governance, we consistently as a country uh, are ranked in the top two in, in Africa with, of course, uh, um, Mauritius being up there as well. Mm. So you as a private investor or being in the private sector, are you finding that uh, the government is giving you enough incentive uh, to stay in the sector and keep driving economic growth forward? I think, look, uh, like with all other countries, there are challenges. Um, what the government does do is th they do try and uh, put in places um, uh, policies and schemes and structures that incentivize uh, the private sector. What, what I can say, which is positive, is that they've been working very closely with us, members of the Botswana coal industry, in developing the, the sector. And, you know, we've seen significant strides in the last 12 months. For example, uh, Botswana started exporting coal abroad for the first time ever last year. Um, you saw that uh, the government has allocated uh, significant funds for the um, in, for investment into transmission networks, which would bring stability to the network and mean that we've got more direct uh, connections with our neighbors. So they have been positive in working with the private sector and also in actually uh, invec investing in the sector. But it, although people think Botswana is rich, relative to the uh, investment required uh, in such uh, projects, for in, in, in rail projects, in um, in mines, in, in, in uh, power lines, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, I would say the country itself cannot afford to pay for these by itself. So we do need a lot of external or, or regional uh, investment um, from other players in order to assist us in uh, developing these key sectors.